I have a multitude of problems. And among those problems is my inability to not judge things by the cover. I have bought many a game just because I thought the title or the cover art or just the genre it belongs to sounds cool, and while there have been a few series that I've gone into that I actually rather quite like, there have been more than a few that have burned me badly. Which makes it a surprise that I have never bought Thumper before it recently released on the Nintendo Switch. See, the game is a self-proclaimed rhythm violence game, and can I just say, that is a fucking phenomenal genre to be a part of. Like, it's this self-proclaimed genre of rhythm violence, and oh, oh, I just, I love the title. In fact, cool genres are just, it's a good way to get me interested in a game. The only reason why I play Toho and things like Jamestown and, um... All other games similar to that is because of their genre bullet hell like if those games did not have that genre I would have dropped them long ago but even though I'm quite frankly absolute shit at them I still play them regularly and purchase them whenever they become available but that's besides the point the point being is that Thumper is this self-proclaimed rhythm violence game and I'm honestly not sure why I haven't bought it before because this game this game is bloody amazing at what it does. Let me just... Okay. Alright, let me just explain to you the gameplay loop. Thumper is this game where you play this weird metallic beetle thing, and you ride on a one-lane highway, and you do rhythmy things. Case in point, you hit this button, you plow through these raw things, you turn and grind on these rails that suddenly appear or well more accurate to say these walls you grind along them and you jump above spikes and you rinse and repeat you fight a couple of bosses you go through some minimal puzzle solving if you can call it that and then you fight rhythm satan and then you rinse and repeat until the end of the game and as things go on it gets even more hectic as it progresses and it's just oh this game this game straddles the line between simplistic and well it's it's simplistic to say but it's simplistic and challenging in a way that I haven't experienced in a very long time um, this game there hasn't been a rhythm game that's engrossed me to this level since Patapon 2, which I would argue is the best of the series, and the only rhythm game which I have become more obsessed with than this was Elite Beat Agents, which is my favorite game of all time, which should tell you something. But anyways, let's just... The Thumper is a... Uh, why is Thumper so good? Uh, it's just... It's presented in such a way that it is... It describes itself as a rhythm violence game and honestly I can't think of an even more perfect way to describe it in all honesty when they called it a rhythm violence game they hit it right on the money there's something about the combination of the dark visuals and the almost sterile presentation of the game that's just it makes one uncomfortable the audio is also a big help it's very it's sort of trance meets heavy metal, which these are two genres that couldn't be farther from each other, yet somehow this game makes it work. As you go through the tracks, you know, the game becomes the game begins rather simply. You hit A, in fact the game is simple all the way through in all honesty, but for the most part, unlike most rhythm games, which you at least have to hit a couple of options, there's usually, you know, a button, a prompt, you know, you have say triangle then square then circle and, and X usually you're using the four face buttons to hit whatever prompts come onto screen but in Thumper there's only one button you use that's the A button and this seems a bit simple at first but you have to use this in combination with the left analog stick case in point very early um, as you were taught in a tutorial that happens very early on in the game basically by level two you know all the inputs you basically hit a to get these um, blocks you know to 
burst some blocks, basically. You hold A to plow through these rods. You hold A and A left or right direction to grind along the walls. And you can hold A up to jump ac across spikes or to hit the rods that are floating in midair. And you can also tilt your direction stick down while you're in the air to slam down. And if you do that on a block, that lets off this like explosion that makes the next block a block that heals you. Like many rhythm games, there is a sort of health system, but unlike most of them, you only have one hit before you die. Basically the game, you have these wings on your back and when you hit something, such as the rods or the wall or the spikes, you lose those wings. And then, you know, the next time you get hit, you die. That's over. It's the end. So basically, this is a game that demands, well, maybe not perfection, but at the very least, you have to hit the notes in the window in which you can hit them. Unlike most rhythm games, this doesn't have a system like good, great, perfect. No, this system is you either hit the block or you don't. And the only thing it has similar to that is the walls, which if you grind at the wall at the very last second, you get a audio cue that says, hey, you did a perfect grind. You're gonna get some more points for this. So the game continues on like this, and it's just, the game hits this very hard to hit, you know, zone in between challenging and frustrating. This game is difficult, don't get me wrong, but I, this, playing this game, unlike most rhythm games, the best way you're going to go through this game is if you get into that trance, and there's no way to describe it, but anyone who's ever played rhythm games for more than a bit, if you're a fan of rhythm games, you know what, you're t what I'm talking about, it, y there's this point where you just kind of turn off your higher mind functions and you concentrate solely on the beat and on what inputs you need and you're not even staring at your character you're like staring into a little bit into the obstacles that are coming up and you just go on automatic and when that this game achieves it almost instantly within like the first set of when the mechanics were explained every time i picked this game up i got into that trance like state where i just go just listen to the beat hit buttons and despite the fact that sometimes I would fail and I would be sent to the beginning of that little particular area, I still wasn't annoyed. I was still zenned out and just, oh, I was loving my time with this. And coupled with the fact that um, this game puts you in a trance, but unlike most rhythm games where you like get relaxed or you get really hyped, I felt kind of sort of uneasy during this game. It's really hard to describe, but like I believe they said they used binaural beats or something. And also, by the way, like most rhythm games, wear headphones when you play this. But yeah, there's just something about the atmosphere and it all mixing together to create this atmosphere that of almost tenseness and uneasiness, but not like the kind, not an unpleasant one, like the kind you would get in a good horror game, which knows what it's doing like you're tense and uneasy and these are negative emotions that you are feeling but at the same time you're feeling them in such a way that like it gets the blood pumping and you're like yeah i i i i am feeling bad i don't like it but at the same time i do like it like it's difficult to escape to, to describe thumper is just oh it hits this sweet spot it's like it does the things a good rhythm game does right but it adds these feelings of tenseness and uneasiness that I have never experienced in a rhythm game and it's kind of weird to do so and it's just, oh, I just love this game. Also, the fact of the matter is that rhythm games, it's on the Switch, so that means you can either play it on your screen or in handheld and I really didn't feel any different in like, there was no frame rate problems, which in a rhythm game is something that can be a deal breaker like there was nothing that messed me up but I think I preferred it in handheld form more and I played it mostly in handheld form mostly because you know rhythm games are something I do to kind of sort of relax so I would just curl up on my bed or in my office chair or just on the couch or something and just zone out for a good 30 minutes to an hour and 
It's weird because rhythm games, while it seems like they play best, you know, portably, there's also the thing like you want to get into a trance when you play them and, you know, playing something on the bus or something like that doesn't seem like it would be conductive, but I have played it in a few public venues such as a local fast food restaurant and on a plug -it public transit bus in my town and it just, I just, you know, it just felt good. It just felt like playing a console level game portably it's just something that amazes me every time I use the Switch. But yeah, this game, there is no real loss in playing it portably. There might be some loss of fidelity, but since the screen is so much smaller than the television screen, you don't really notice it. So yeah, Thumper is just... If you can buy this game, I totally recommend you buy it. It's a great rhythm game. It's simple to understand, but difficult as shit to master. And if you can buy it on your Nintendo Switch and take it with you portably, it works fantastically there. Both the TV experience and the handheld experience are phenomenal. This is definitely a 8.5, 9 out of 10 game. It is definitely a must-buy if you are a fan of rhythm games, especially if you're a rhythm game fan on the Switch, because they haven't released a lot of those, at least that I know of. There might be some like indie games that I haven't checked out yet, but I will do so as soon as possible all right that's been my thoughts and opinions on thumper for well basically i think it's on everything but especially the nintendo switch if you like this video like it if you disliked it there's a button for that too comment subscribe ring that bell and i'll be sure to see you guys next time oh by the way if you like this content feel free to support me via patreon which is something i have up and i don't have I don't think I have any patrons at all, but that's just an option if you want to help me out or buy something off my Amazon wish list. I don't know. Anyways, that's been me for the day. Juan John John, and I shall see you all on the 15th. Yeah, that's right. I have a new schedule for my videos. I am going to be releasing videos on the 15th and the 30th of every month. And if there is no 30th, cough, cough, February, then I guess I get some weeks off you know fuck it <laughs> who cares who gives a shit yeah there, there we go we got a built-in vacation hiatus week all right so i shall see you all next time goodbye